morning. Today we're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. The second half of this chapter is all about the Lord's Supper. Now, if you're part of Park, um, you know on Sundays that we can gather, at least, we, sh we celebrate the Lord's Supper every single Sunday uh, with the bread and the wine and the juice um, in order to remember Christ's death for us. Now, if you've read this chapter, you might think to yourself, he's talking about the Lord's Supper, but that's not at all what I understand we do on Sundays. And you're right. Back then in first century Corinth, um, it was done quite differently than it is for us today. Back then, this was more like a community potluck. Um, everyone brought their own food, everyone shared. It was a big meal. At the center of the meal was a time set aside for, you know, this is the body broken for you, this is uh, his blood shed for you, in order to remember and celebrate Christ's death. So at the heart of it was a Lord's Supper, really very similar to ours, but it was in the context of this big community meal. Now what Paul is doing here is addressing a very serious issue that was happening in this Corinthian church. Uh, he talks about in verse 20, when you come together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper. Paul's saying, you've got to be kidding me. If you think this is what the Lord's Supper is, you have to be kidding me. He says, for when the time comes to eat, each of you goes ahead with your own supper, with your own meal, while one goes hungry and another becomes drunk. What? Don't you have houses to eat and drink in? Paul's kind of getting on them here. Um, and here's the issue. The issue is that in first century Corinth, this church was very diverse. There was rich people and poor people. There was have-beens and have-nots. And the issue was the rich people were getting there on time because they weren't, you know, working out in the field somewhere. They had time. They got there on time and they were, you know, pooling all the food and they were eating all the food so that when the poor people came who were out busting their butts in the fields or wherever they were working, they got there late, hungry, because they have no money, they have no food, and there was no food for them to eat. The rich people who had, you know, who had the food, who had the money, they were eating it all. And so Paul addresses this in harsh terms uh, in, in verse 27, really speaking to those rich people. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body, eat and drink judgment against themselves. A lot of people, when they read this passage, they think to themselves, what this means is we have to examine ourselves, make sure we've been good enough this week, make sure we've been pure enough or holy enough in order to take the Lord's Supper this week. That's not what Paul's talking about. What Paul is talking about here when he says discerning the body, he means the body of Christ. He means the people who are gathered. If uh, I am showing up early and I'm eating all the food and someone else is going hungry, I have to examine my actions and my behaviors. That can't be the way uh, a Christ follower is meant to share in the Lord's Supper. Um, what Paul is getting at here is that everyone is equally unworthy of this meal uh, and therefore, everyone is equally worthy because God in Christ uh, has made them worthy. We are all equal before God. And so the only reason we shouldn't eat and drink the Lord's Supper is if we have decided that we are better than someone else, that we are more worthy to eat this meal than someone else because it shows us that we have understood nothing. So next time we're able to gather together on a Sunday morning and eat the bread and drink from the cup, come as someone who is absolutely unworthy, but by God's grace has been made worthy uh, because of his blood which is shed for you.